Uh, Mr. Barrios Gomez, uh, first of all, thank you for making time to speak with me today. I do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Uh, the expectations have been uh, mostly, I think, downplayed for this summit. How important do you think this meeting is between the three leaders? Yeah, we need to get away from that downplaying of expectations. That's been a hallmark of these summits since the beginning, and it's silly. Um, in particular, this is the most important uh, North American Leaders Summit in history. We are uh, in, in at a moment in time in which uh, leaders are taking their uh, are taking their citizenry down paths that are that are very nasty. Uh, we seem to have forgotten the main lessons of World War II. We just saw Brexit. People are looking to somehow fix their problems independently of one another. And if anybody has has, has any grip on history, that's just wrong. So um, right now, the North American Leaders Summit is an amazing uh, symbol of, of solidarity and of working together in North America. North America is 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 a privileged continent that we that we often uh, we often overlook that. But the fact that our three countries share common values. Um, that we are three democracies, that we are tolerant uh, of religions, that we are three countries that are based on, that are uh, that are founded on immigration, and that are open to trade is is, is spectacular. We need to we need to celebrate that more, especially now, because uh, so much seems to be at stake. Okay, uh, let's talk about some of the some of the issues between Canada and Mexico, and and then we'll we'll, we'll broaden out the conversation as well. Uh, it seems likely now that uh, Canada is going to lift the uh, the visa requirements that have been such a sore point for Mexican travelers and, and the Mexican government uh, as of December 1st. Um, how important is it to get that issue between our two countries resolved? Well, our two countries didn't have a visa requirement uh, up until 2009, um, and Mexico doesn't have a visa requirement for any country in Europe or in, or Japan or anything like that. So the visa requirement was seen as something as 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 as, as something of an aberration. And uh, it is very important. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think it would behoove Canadians to actually take a look at their visa uh, uh, requirements and, and, and the type of documents and information that they require from the applicants. It's actually more than intrusive. It's downright, uh, it's, it's downright insulting. Uh, and so by having this and by removing this, we can finally get away from the issues um, that have been with this one issue that has been clouding the the relationship, and I think we'll do that, and I think we'll do that very very quickly, uh, because at the end of the day, there is an, an incredible uh, affinity between these two countries. The, 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 as you know, the the requirements were instituted by the uh, the previous government, concerned about the numbers of uh, Mexican travelers applying for uh, refugee status in this country and for asylum in Canada. Uh, this government, uh, we expect, will there may be conditions attached to the lifting of the requirements that include. Uh, perhaps reinstating them if the number of asylum seekers is back over 3,500 uh, per year. Um, what about those conditions? Well, I mean, asylum, seeking asylum, I think the rules um, need to be even more strict and more clear on behalf of Canada. Um, and the and the consequence of not meeting the requirements for, 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 for asylum need to be more immediate. Uh, and that's been true for as long as uh, Canada has had an asylum policy. Um, and it's something that Canadians need to look at, just like Mexicans need to deal with the fact that uh, we have massive amounts of immigration problems with Central America. So we've had to deal with those issues um, as, 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 as these things have come up. And so these are, these are things that, that, are, that are incumbent on, on, on our national governments, and that's something that needs to be done anyway. Now, I, I think that with very basic, very cursory uh, um, review of the majority of people who travel back and forth between between our two countries, there shouldn't be that problem. There should be there should there shouldn't be any uh, there shouldn't be any need for right, a full right. visa requirement. And I think that there are many ways that we can check on that. Of course, those asylum seekers are are coming to Canada in many cases because uh, they're they're claiming uh, human rights abuses in Mexico, and there are groups in this country already ahead of the visit who've been saying uh, Prime Minister uh, Trudeau needs to raise some human rights concerns with uh, with uh, President Peña Nieto. Um, what, what about those concerns about human rights issues in Mexico? Well, first of all, um, I'm, I'm, I'm an outgoing congressman from an opposition party, mm -hmm. so I have no uh, commitment to, 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 to back the Peña Nieto government. What I will tell you is that Mexico is a, is a country of 2 million square kilometers with 120 million people and 120 million inhabitants. It's a very large country. So there are significant basic governance issues in certain parts of the country. And these include states like Guerrero and Oaxaca 
and uh, Tamaulipas. And there, and there we are seeing an infiltration on behalf of certain groups, uh, certain criminal groups in, in law enforcement. And it's a significant issue. And Mexico really not, needs to face that much more strongly than we have up until now. Having said that, the majority of the of, of the territory is not um, it does not have those sorts of issues, and the majority of us live in in very 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 calmly and very tranquilly and very happily uh, here in Mexico. And and I've been both an, an opposition politician, having run three three campaigns myself, having been a federal uh, a federal congressman, right. or the opposition, having been also a a. Um, a, a journalist uh, for several years, and I can tell you that I've never faced anything untoward in my entire uh, in my entire career here. Let me let's talk about you. You touched on it briefly. Let's let's talk about the possibility and the the sentiment, perhaps, of, of uh, growing protectionism uh, being on the rise in the United States. That has implications, of course, for both Mexico and Canada, and and as well for the United States. But uh, Donald Trump says he'll rip up the North American Free Trade Agreement. He's against the Trans-Pacific Partnership uh, Trade Deal, as is Hillary Clinton. What do you think the leaders need to say at this summit about the importance of trade to all of our countries? Well, to begin with, I, I think the first thing we need to understand is that we are facing an existential threat to the North American project. And this is not just about NAFTA. This is about uh, xenophobic sentiments and unacceptable uh, political behavior uh, taking the place of civil discourse. And what we're talking about is that we, we are actually dealing with the possibility that, that peace and prosperity on this continent are actually up for grabs. Uh, with with a Trump with a potential Trump presidency. So with respect to trade, I mean, it's just so fundamentally silly that we're still debating this after 22 years of NAFTA, having seen the the uh, uh, trade just multiply and with all the benefits that means for everybody. In the case of the United States, 14 million American jobs depend directly on NAFTA. How is a President Trump going to face those 14 million people? Is he going to say, oh, look, I don't care about your jobs. I have this fantasy that there are going to be many more. Uh, if you just give me a minute, you know, we can get to that. I mean, it's just so stupid the way that this rhetoric has been included. You mentioned uh, uh, Secretary Clinton. Mm -hmm. Secretary Clinton on two occasions um, over the last two uh, uh, presidential uh, candidacies that she's had has actually mentioned NAFTA. And it's silly because she's just trying to pander to that left side of, of, of her of her party. And I, I'm reminded of her husband when he had to pick up on this idea of, of environment and, and, uh, and labor um, uh, restrictions and also financing for uh, the training of those displaced by the jobs. I think that that third point, the training for displaced uh, workers for the who, who, whose jobs have been displaced for the benefit of the general population through consumers, better prices, better quality, I think that that's something that we can revisit and that's something uh, legitimate. The other is actually just subsidizing inefficiencies and making everybody poor. Can I ask you what, what's what's the objective for uh, in particular? What's the objective for for Mexico at this summit? They'll be talking trade. They'll be talking uh, clean energy opportunities. They'll be talking climate change. We're, we have three leaders who are largely aligned on the need to to take action here. What's the objective for Mexico coming out of the summit? The object, the general objective, and I think this is the number one point that. It is extremely important right now, especially in the face of Brexit and, and everything that's been going on, that we that we double down, that we be very precise with respect to the fact that we see the future as a cooperation, as peace, and as shared prosperity, and as openness. I think that's number one. I mean, we, we really should not put that aside, especially in the, in the face of all of these issues that we've been having. The second thing that we're going to be looking for is obviously um, is, is the cooperation that is already going on with respect to green energy, with respect to uh, with respect to carbon emissions. As you know, Mexico has one of the most um, uh, the most ambitious goals for clean energy. We we actually legislated in my legislature that 35 percent of our energy needs would be would be taken care of by clean energy. And so we're looking to make sure that the rest of North, North American partners are in line with that. And I think that with with cooperation across the borders for, for North America, there's this very interesting study that I think we need to be very, uh, very uh, uh, conscious of. The Department of Energy in the United States is going to publish a study on energy for the first time actually analyzing the entire region and not just the United States. I think that that's going to be very exciting. And I would look for the uh, for the uh, for the leaders of Canada and Mexico to actually ask President Obama about that. I think that there needs to be a statement with respect to the fact that xenophobia, racism, and all of this is unacceptable. I would be looking for that. I think Canada in particular 
um, needs to be needs to be thinking about its role uh, with respect to this potential um, populist coming into power in the United States and very, being very clear that Canada is not Lord Chamberlain, but rather uh, Churchill in that respect, that they won't try to appease, but will actually okay. stand on principle. All of these things I think we should be looking out for. All right. Uh, I appreciate your perspective and uh, lots to consider as uh, the leaders get down to work here. Uh, Augustin Barrios-Gomez, uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Peter.